This is Zach and Gus, the podcast. I've just realised, hello everybody, welcome, this is Zach and Gus, episode 29. I've just realised I don't have anything to flip, so Gus... Oh, it's Zach's turn to Phil flip. For me. Uh, Phil, filler, filler. Wow, it's episode 29. Can't believe we've made it this far. How crazy is that? Ooh. Whoa. Well, uh, Zach's going to find an object to, to flip. He can't find one. This is pretty crazy. Whoa, will Zach find an object? Find out soon, hopefully. Oh. Found He's found an object. Okay. We are flipping. A six pack of whiteboard markers. Okay. Uh I want the 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 logo side up. Okay, so you got logo side and the description side. Gus wants the logo side. And we're flipping. Logo side up. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 29 <laughs> of the Zach and Gus podcast. Now everybody. Uh, we do want to start this with some bad news. It hurts to do this, Gus. It really does. It feels like... I'm not going to say stabbing a child of yours because that's... <laughs> <laughs> How did your mind even go there? Look, I just want to... Well, because this, I wanna this podcast this news. is a child of ours. Uh, uh, so I that's that how makes I, sense. That's how I got that. I just want to foreshadow this news by saying if you want to point blame on anyone, I'd say definitely put it Zach's way. Because oh, we were never gonna we were never gonna not blame it on me. Wasn't it always going to be my fault? I mean, I guess it's your fault. I mean, it's kind of out of your control unless you were to drop out of school. Uh, I I feel like we need to explain <laughs> this. Uh, this is going. No, or do we want to continue um, buffering for the rest of the episode? Because it's <laughs> going to be a very short episode. Otherwise, no. I, I feel soon, like we've got to. We'll tell you what we're talking about. We have to face facts. We have to let our audience know what's going on. And this. <laughs> And we're back because I stuffed up something. We've done a cut somewhere. Uh, classic Zach. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. This is going to be the second last episode of the Zach and Gus podcast. Really, really sad. For this season! <laughs> <laughs> That's right, people. We will be returning Sometimes. Hopefully, when COVID restrictions have eased to the point where Zach and I can be in person again, but it will be video. However, that will person. not limit us. We will be back. We will be taking the majority of November off because I have year 12 exams. Ah, Zach and his school and his... <sighs> having his life uh, it's together. It's really inconsiderate, isn't it? Wow. Yeah, I know. It's like you didn't drop out a bunch of times and then decide never to come back. Do you even care about the podcast? <laughs> uh, so, unfortunately, this has been something that we're we were going to have to face for a very long time. Not for a very long time, but since the start of the podcast, we knew we were going to have to take a break in November. Um, Zach, what do you reckon your ATAR is going to be? <laughs> Can we not go into this? <laughs> Let's do Zach's ATAR prediction on the show, and then when we come back, how about we do we'll we do was. Zach's ATAR reaction? And I don't open my ATAR until we until... come back. Well, no, the ATARs are coming out on December thirty one. So how about I open my ATAR on the podcast? Okay, yeah, that works. That works. That works. God, that's really gonna <laughs> fucking ruin that episode if we do it with the start, <laughs> and I'm disappointed with my result. Jesus Christ. Do I have to tell the podcast what my ATAR result is? Or can I just say if I'm disappointed or not? I mean, obviously you don't have to say, but look, if it's a good result, you're going to want to say, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Okay, if it's if it's within the range of what I need for my uni course, I'll be open about it. <laughs> so if Zach doesn't say, just know that he didn't <laughs> get into the course he wanted to. <laughs> well, no, nothing's solidified until I get... Um, like a nominate uh, approached for entry but yeah all right so that's that's that that's what we're going for yep. so i will open my atar live on the podcast yeah you realize that means i'm gonna make you record an episode on the morning of new year's eve yeah that's fine i don't i don't have plans plans for new year's <laughs> new year's eve so you can still go out and party that night no the night after because i don't party not new year's day <laughs> I, i've never party <laughs> 
Okay, uh, maybe I'll do a pre-recorded segment then if Gus isn't available. No, I'll be available, 100%. Okay. Um, yeah, so we're going to be gone for a month. The initial plan was to do three or four backup episodes. However, we thought, you know what, maybe not, because the first backup episode was utter shit. Except the audience seemed to love it for some reason. It went really well in terms of downloads, which we couldn't understand. Yeah. Um, anyway, we decided that we didn't want to do that. Plus, we never got around to filming one backup episode let alone three or four and yeah it's just kind of a good time to to wrap it up wrap up season one have a bit of a break and uh come back better than ever uh yeah so we will be ending on the ripe old number of 30 yes is there anything we want to more to talk about for that no i think we've stretched (laughs) out we're finishing season one for as long as we should. So, <laughs> l- let let us remind you, we will be back. We will absolutely be back. Keep keep an eye on, on, on the Instagram. Go follow it now if you Actually, haven't already. Good... At Zach and Gus on Instagram. For... Looking at you, everyone who listens and doesn't follow the Instagram, there's definitely a few of you. Follow the Instagram, Z-A-C-A-N-D-G-U-S. And uh, like us on Facebook if you're old. Um. <laughs> Mum, that's for you. Um, okay, so we've finished dragging this one out for as long as we can. Are we sure there's nothing more that we want to talk about? In case you guys haven't got an idea, we've got so much content this week, so we're really trying to rush through what we've got so we can fill it all in. Oh, absolutely. We're definitely not going to be making anything go for any longer than it should, but I, I think it's time we, 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 we move on. Zach, I believe you have a game, a very long game. Oh, unfortunately, I have written in the planning document a very quick game so i don't know where you've gotten long from well if we stretch it out as much as possible it could be a very long game that's true okay i'll try and make this as long as possible gus you out of everyone are the biggest sports fanatic i know in the world <laughs> absolutely no no um sarcasm there at all gus watches every sport ever and Man, he just always Guys, has a I'm clue. such a sport fanatic that I'm going to be watching the AFL Grand Final tonight. I know. Pretty fucking niche. So, we're recording this on Saturday afternoon. The Grand Final is tonight, and this comes out the morning after the Grand Final. So, I planned this game and really should have brought it to the show last week. So, it's going to require a lot of trust between the audience and us. Before I go into this game, Gus, can you tell me what two teams are in the grand final tonight? I know it's Cats, right? Yeah, Geelong's one of them. Yep. And is it Richmond? Correct. Wow, that's not the game. (laughs) Okay, because I actually thought that was going to be the game. And uh, (laughs) I wasn't entirely confident there either. Don't worry, I've made an opener for this game. I think this is going to become a yearly recurring theme because you have no clue about sports at all. So we're going to do this each and every year. It's Gus's annual grand final prediction. (laughs) Okay, I like this a lot more than me just trying to guess what teams are playing. But this would also be a way funnier segment if I didn't know what teams were playing. Well, in future, maybe we'll make you guess from the teams you guessed. But yeah, so with no knowledge of AFL whatsoever, I don't even reckon you'd be able to name a, two players playing tonight. I couldn't name one, Zach. You're giving me too much credit. <laughs> okay, so the way this game's going to work is Gus is going to tell us his prediction to win the AFL Grand Final tonight for us, last night for everyone listening on Sunday. Mm. So, we could edit it, but There are going to be no cuts in this whatsoever. You can watch the video version for proof. Gus, the current time is 1.39 on Saturday, the 24th of October. It's actually just ticked over to 1.40. Good point. The game is at 7.30 on Saturday, the 24th of October. Gus, who do you think... Also, I won't play a correct sound effect or not. I will play a crowd booing or a crowd (laughs) celebrating. Perfect, perfect. 
Who is your tip for the 2020 AFL Grand Final? All right, guys. Now, this is a tricky one because uh, I've been following the, the sport quite closely in uh, the lead up to the Grand Final. And, uh, you know, it's just been it's been so close in all the games that I've watched. And, uh, you know, they're, they're both they're both playing really well. I really, uh, you know, the the players are doing the good things, kicking the balls, uh, good things. you know, uh, doing well in the ruck and such. And uh, so, <laughs> therefore, this is going to be a tough prediction for me to make, you know. Uh, but I'm going to have to give it to... Uh, can I have a drum roll? Can I have a drum roll, Zach? Sure, we've got a drum roll now. The winner of the 2020 Toyota AFL Grand Final will be... Or has been... The Geelong Cats. Whoa. Whoa. Now, right now, you can hear the crowd is either celebrating or booing. If you're listening to this, you know who's won the Grand Final. Unfortunately, it hasn't happened for us yet, so we don't actually know. I can, like, fully predict the future, though. That's what you didn't know going into this. I've actually already watched the game, so... Okay, can you <laughs> That's name That's going to sound really dumb if I got it wrong and really, like, amazing if I got it right. Guys, I have a time machine, and this is either proof or disproof of that. Um, do you, can you name anything notable that happens during the game to prove that you've got a time machine? Oh, uh, one of the players kicks a ball from the inside 50 and it like <laughs> totally fucking goes through the goalposts and shit god it would be great to have a Gus reacts to the AF. oh my god you should surely be able to do a Gus reacts to the grand final uh, fuck on your do own I have personal to? YouTube on your own personal YouTube for your own content yeah I know but that means I have to do that tonight no shit, you sure, Rock? It's not happening tomorrow. <laughs> or I could just, or I could just not watch it, and then watch it tomorrow, but not what, not somehow avoid the results, and then pretend. You'd I'm realize that alive. you'd have to stay off all social media. Yeah, and I'd have to stay away from just any person as well. I'd have to and become a hermit. And then It'd I'd also have to... to find a replay of the stream without seeing who won. Yeah, that's going to be... Look, it might be easier for you to just do it live. Fuck it, we'll do it live. You cannot just quote the Kyle and Jackie O show opener. <laughs> hey, no, they got that from somewhere else, so... uh. Yeah, no shit, but where? Well, I'm not quoting them, I'm quoting whoever they got it from. <laughs> Padding's going well. We're already about 14 minutes in. <laughs> so, um... Yep. Yeah. Yep. Do you want me to talk about my next thing? Yeah, absolutely, Zach. Uh... Okay, I don't know if you've heard about this, Gus, but Gus... Oh, shit, not Gus. Donald Trump, um, he uses Twitter a lot, doesn't he? He He's known for the twiddin' and the twaddin' and the twaddin'. Yep, absolutely. Um... A Dutch researcher last week claimed that he successfully hacked into Donald Trump's Twitter account. Okay. All right. Uh, After correctly guessing the president's password after a fifth attempt. Now, the hacker says two-factor security authentication, however you say that long word, was not enabled (laughs) on the, the Trump's account. But surely he would just have people to enable that. Like, wouldn't his staff just do that for him? Like, yeah, I understand Donald not doing it before he became president. But surely once he's become president, someone's gone in. Now, sir, what security do you have on your account? The answer? Not much. Do you know about this, Gus? I have not read about this. So, did was his password, like, announced? Did this guy tell what his password was? Yeah. MAGA 2020 exclamation mark. There is no... (laughs) Is this like... There is no way... Is this guaranteed, like, actual true information? No. Victor Gevez said he could post tweets, change his profile, and had access to the direct messages, yet is refusing to show any proof of it. Mm. Yeah, that's a bit... I don't know. And instead of exposing Trump... Uh, or even tweeting from Trump's account, 
He just tweeted at the White House's Twitter account saying, I've logged into, like from his own personal account, I've logged into Donald's Twitter, change the password. (laughs) So there's no reason to believe that this is true. No. However, it did make it to many notable news sources such as theguardian.com. Fuck, maybe that can be our Daily Mail moment. Because we were planning on having our Daily Mail moment be... Uh, yeah, that that didn't work, guys. We created a fake email. And the Daily Mail, to our knowledge, never wrote an article about us. About me and announcing how KFC makes their potato. But we could have... A, we. All we have to do is pretend we were able to log into some celebrity's account and then tweet at them and be like... I think that might be stretching it a bit. (laughs) That's literally what this guy did though, isn't it? That's Oh, that's true. He did do it, but I feel like two people doing it in the space of two weeks. Ah, yeah. You might have a point. We'll we'll wait a while. Um, I also think this guy may have been notable. We'll wait for... Oh, yeah. Well, we'll, mm, yeah. No, we're not notable at all. Okay. Well, no, way no. to just fucking shit all over my plans, Zach. Well, I'm sorry. Um, also, apparently, this person has already gained access to Trump's account t- once before. In 2016, he apparently guessed Trump's password as You're Fired, a ca- his catchphrase from uh, The Apprentice. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I, don't, I, I really don't believe this, to be honest. Wait, who is this guy? Is, does he, he have, is. Does he have credibility as anything? Victor Gevez, a security expert. <laughs> okay. I don't know anything else about him. So, he says that a day after he tagged the CIA, White House, and FBI, two step verification was turned on, and then two days later, the Secret Service got in touch. Yeah, he's still not shown any proof. Mm. 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 And Trump has denied this. We've seen no evidence to corroborate this claim, including from the article published in the Netherlands today. Mm. 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 Okay. Zach. Um, mm. Zach. Are you literally just moving on from that? Yep. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, well, it's a okay, great so episode s- today, folks. We have a contact form on our website. No, this wasn't a contact form. This was from the email, mate. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? <laughs> the top the, the email at the top of our emails is new submission from contact us. So you're not talking about the email from Joseph. Bleep. Oh, no, I didn't see that. Uh, I'll talk about that. Okay. okay, I'm... No, 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 piss off. I'm talking about it. Okay, fuck you. Then talk about it. Okay, guys. We have an email. We do. We have an email address. Wait, I... where you. So when I said we got an email, you immediately went, oh, yeah, we got an email from a spam thing. Trying to sell us cargo. Yes, Hair dog that. best. I wanted to talk about that. I thought it was strange that people are using the contact form on our website for our podcast to advertise us. What are they advertising us? Um, dog harnesses. Yeah, what the fuck? Okay, <laughs> okay you do that while I... <laughs> I've got something ten times better. All right, well, just go to your thing then. My thing was shit. We thought we were talking about the same thing, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so, then, yeah, I haven't read. Week- I haven't read this email, so it will be a complete surprise. Okay. So we've got an email, Zach and Gus Show at gmail dot com. We've asked all of you people to contact us for a very long time, and last week we received our first notable contact, titled "Greetings from America." Joseph contacted us. Oh, yeah, because we put out a call. We did a call out to our American listeners, didn't we? Asking them to contact mm. us. Yes. Now, once Joseph here got onto that, we got contact. Now, he could have... He could be fake. However, the amount of things that he's written, I don't think is fake. Okay. So, Joseph, thanks for contacting us. We'll 
get into your email and say... Also, he commented on the YouTube video. How did you not see that vi- comment either? I don't, I don't really check... I don't know. which. Wait, which video did he comment on? He commented on one saying... Um, on the brekkie sode, he oh. commented, it was lovely eating breakfast with the brekkie sode. Also, did you guys get my email? Love you boys. Yeah, no, I didn't see that. I don't really check oh, them. Poor Joseph. <laughs> I'm anyway, sorry, so- Joseph. Please forgive me. <laughs> he, Joseph starts off, I started listening to your show when I was trying to see if another podcast, I never heard of him, was on iHeartRadio. Then this podcast showed up. The goofy cover art was enough for me to listen to this episode and I was pleasantly surprised. I've been a loyal listener since. Oh, oh. We've got a friend, Gus. Someone who doesn't know us personally actually listens to our show. Loyally. 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 Um, so, he says he's been studying for exams. Shout out to the class of 2021 seniors. So, you're younger than us, Joseph. But good luck for your exams. He might be younger than us, but they also do exams like half a year after us. I don't know so anything might... about the American schooling system. You don't know anything about the Australian schooling system either. That is also true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, la di da di da this is probably a really late response, but after listening to Egg and Cup episode, I heard you guys ask for feedback, so here it is. Yes, an American does listen to your show. Shout out to me. Yes, shout out to you, Joseph. 10 out of 10. Good work. Now, this is where we intercept this email right now to say, if you want to contact us, tell us a story, let us know about you, anything, <coughs> especially if you don't know Zach or Gus, or me or Gus personally, we would love to hear from you. So, hit us up. I'll put the email on screen right now. Show at gmail.com or you can head over to our website, zachandgus.com where we have a contact form that is constantly used to show us dog, us dog harnesses. Now, Joseph went on... This is actually quite a long email, so I'll try and summarize it. None of his friends know what he's talking about when he talks about Australia's favorite redhead, Pauline Hansen, or swinger parties in Queensland. <laughs> Now, let, <laughs> let me set the record straight with you, Joseph. Nobody loves Pauline Hansen. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Paul... Oh, so he's... Pauline Hansen is most famous for being racist. Um, yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's pretty much her, her selling point as a politician. Um, Joseph said... That he planned on eating breakfast with a brekkie sode, which was very nice of him. Thank you. Obviously, he did that. And he found the egg in cup joke the perfect amount of dry humor to be funny. He's attached to TikTok that he reckons nobody else found funny, but he did. So, we're going to cut. I'm going to send you this TikTok, Gus, and we're going to watch it together. All right, this is Sylvester Stallone as your Uber driver. Hey, yo, how you doing? Where you going? It's in the app. Okay. Make sure to give it a five star, you know what I mean? It's like, uh, where am I? I don't get it. <laughs> I I love that, Joseph. Sylvester Stallone, I believe, is a porn star. Is he? Oh, a perfect excuse to Google it. Sylvester Stallone. No, he's an actor. He's an actor. Dude, he looks kind of familiar. Yeah. Well, considering I don't know who it is, I... I um... He's worth a whopping $400 million. How do we not know about this person? <laughs> well, what, what movies has he been in? Rambo. Fuck, yeah. Everyone tells me I should watch that. Oh, he was in Rocky as well. Oh, God, this is just embarrassing. This is showing how uncultured we are as humans. Can we just cut this part out? <laughs> no, okay, so, Joseph, we found your TikTok funny for how we didn't understand what it meant. Um, and I thought he was he, a porn star, so... <laughs> yeah, Sylvester Stallone does porn. Stallone does porn. Um, and he signs it off. Anyways, just wanted to show my support for the podcast and prove that I'm an American, not an Indian scammer. I do listen to the podcast, and Egg and Cup is objectively funny. So he's Fuck yeah, it is! Show. No, it's not. Um, la di da di da. P.S. The Zack Up Gusting case was actually pretty decent and send me a copy of the Zack and Gus Bible when it's finished. Love you, boys. Joseph, we love your work. Thank you so much. You're going to be treasured in our hearts for the first ever 
person, but we didn't know to contact the podcast. Amazing. Now... Feels good. Now... Now... Uh, well, now it's your thing again because you took the thing that I... Do you, do you want to... Well, no, because I've done very quick game, Trump password, emails, and now this in order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you haven't noticed, uh, I haven't brought much content to the show, guys. Um, okay. Now, how about you? Do you want to talk about the e- whatever you were going to fucking talk about on the emails? No, that was just people use the contact form on our website to advertise us random like wish products and shit. I don't think it's actual people. I think it's like bots and spam. Like, because other things we've gotten include Matthias trying to sell us Oakley sunglasses, which are obviously a scam. Everyone knows about the sunglasses scam. John Bowen selling us testimonials. <laughs> Shirley selling us body revolution uh, body posture. Can we correctors. buy a testimonial? <laughs> How much did they cost? $49 a month. Wait, why would you have a m- monthly subscription for testimonials? I think it's an ongoing positive reviews. Testimonial. Okay, can you f- see the email? It was sent on the 9th of October. I don't want to click on that fucking link. Our company, Ratings King, specializes in posting five-star testimonials on all major review sites. Is that even, like, legal? Well, we can't... We don't have reviews on our site. Uh, also, no, it's illegal. Um, so, I reckon... Can we contact them and get them to email us a testimonial and then we will put it on our homepage? Yes. Can you click on the link? I don't want to touch that link. <laughs> so, I'm the I'm the guinea pig for ratingsking.com slash packages.php. Fine. Yeah. Um, it's loading... Millions of people search online for good services. Would you like to be the one they choose? Yes. They have a phone number. Um, Is the phone number Australian? Can we call it? No. Uh, okay, so they have five different plans that you can get. 15 reviews mm. a month for 49 bucks. 35 for 99 140 for 299 300 for 499 or 680 reviews for $999 a month. Who the fuck is doing that? If you're that dedicated to getting reviews, maybe put that money into actually improving your business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, fuck. I am... Yeah, I'm not that surprised that there's a company that does this. But I also don't want to give How them $49. About, um, if you want to give us an overly fucked testimonial make it positive review us on the itunes store five stars give us a review i actually completely forgot that we kind of rely on itunes reviews for people whatever app you use give us five stars and give us a nice review so more people like joseph can find us yeah i mean most i don't think many podcast apps actually have a review feature so Mm. even if you listen to us on another app just go over to apple podcasts and give us five stars because that's really the most important place or spotify probably has it as well um, I don't think Spotify does have ratings, okay. to be completely honest with you. Well, okay. All Gus and I agree on is we absolutely hate uh, podcasts from that app that we just mentioned that I won't mention again. Which app? The one that kind of has a, a symbol that looks a bit like Wi-Fi. Oh, yeah, no. Um, <coughs> <coughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> I have some TikToks I want to talk about. Okay, yeah. So, I don't know how long we can make this last. I haven't written anything down about it. Oh, I God, guess... Right. I mean, it's, Zach, you're not going to be able to watch these because I don't have them pre-downloaded, but I'm going to play some of oh, them now the on, the, on, on the side of me. You can see them playing. This is the Pee Your Pants Challenge. What? Now... We've talked previously on this show about TikTok trends going too far with all those Gen Zers, Zers. I, I mean, I say Z, but it sounds wrong when you say it like that. Yeah. They all got this tattoo that they thought symbolized them all being part of Gen Z, but it actually was 
a German what do you call it? Wolf's a wolf's angle. Yeah. Wolf's angel. Something something bad related to the Nazi. Not I got told off for saying it wrong yeah, last time. Yeah, you <laughs> you always it. you were saying Nazis instead of Nazis. Nazi. 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 <laughs> Yazi. Anyway. Double six. I have found <laughs> something even more fucking insane. So, you know, the internet is very uh, it's very common for people to make a shit post on the internet, right? Oh, mate, it happens all the time. Like satire, doing something to just make fun of people who would do that thing. And so this person started this trend on TikTok called the pee your pants challenge. And the concept is as simple as it sounds. You record yourself in the mirror. You use the original audio what? from the original TikTok, which is just like, pee your pants challenge. And you piss oh, your no. pants in the mirror visibly so that people can like see it like going down your leg and dead set. Like this person started this trend as a joke and so many people got on board and did it. Can we please do it? <laughs> Zach, I'm not pissing my pants for TikTok. <laughs> I would 100% piss my own pants for TikTok. Can we please? The sad, the saddest part about it, though, is that like one or two people went viral from it. And then you've just of got... Of course they did. Yeah, it's but then you've just TikTok. got hundreds of other people who pissed their pants and got nothing. <laughs> they got nothing. And that video is going to be on the internet forever. I, that's, oh, that's so a good sad. Point. That is a very good point. Um, is it is it worth us pissing our pants? Zach, I am not doing the we, pee your pants challenge. <laughs> knowing fully well that we will not go viral from it. I brought this up to symbolize how TikTok constantly goes too far. Us participating in this trend would, would not work for the point I'm trying to make about it. Well, no, because sometimes we stoop too far. And if we acknowledge it, then it's fine. No one is pissing your pants on camera. I don't see any problem with it. We've done a lot of other things on camera. Okay, we'll do the shit your pants challenge. Because <laughs> I think this trend I mean, has died already now, so we got to make a new one. Shit your pants challenge. The throw up on a bus challenge. There's a throwback Puking to uh, last week when Zach... Almost threw up on a bus. Yeah, and in my shoe, I was going to do it. <laughs> throw up you in your best more... pair of shoes challenge. Best only. Because <laughs> I've only got like I've only got one pair of shoes that aren't my school shoes, and I was wearing them. So if I puked in them, I'd need new shoes. I have four pairs of shoes. Wow, flex! Why do you need four pairs of shoes? You've only got two sho- feet. I have a pair of shoes for running. I have my my Doc Martens. Um, I have my my. I remember when you bought your Doc Martens. Actually, you sent me a photo from your tra- from a tram. I have dress shoes for when I wear like a suit, and I have. No, that might be all my shoes. I threw a pair of shoes out recently. Do you know how interesting this is? It's really <laughs> fucking shit. So why don't you tell us about what what you've got next on the planning document? Okay. So, time capsules. You know what a time capsule is, Gus? Yep. It's a, it's a capsule that you put things in and then you open on a specified date in the future. <laughs> if it, now, just in case anyone didn't know. Um, We actually had time... We still do have a time capsule at our... My current... Your old high school. Oh, I thought you meant us as a show had a time capsule, and I was really confused. No, but we should. We should do, do that. A time yeah. capsule. Where would we bury it? Um, I, 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 I don't know. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so, time capsules—they interest a lot of people, especially people, excuse me, who can't open them yet. Hmm. Hmm. Now. Uh, in Southwest WA, a primary school called Yarloop Primary School put a time capsule in the ground 20 meters down two decades ago. Now, 
It was it was buried in two thousand, and it was meant to be dug up this year. Now six weeks ago, they started trying to find the time capsule. However, they've lost it. Oh no! They've lost a time capsule in the ground. Why did they bury it so fucking deep? That's one thing. They reckon it's been stolen. So someone's come in, dug it up. (laughs) Did anyone know about the location of their time capsule? Yeah, well, it was buried as part of a big school event. Ah, okay. Who the fuck is going to come... Dig 20 meters underground and steal what probably has nothing particularly valuable in it. Here's the catch. The most valuable item is a bottle of red wine. (laughs) Just a regular bottle of red wine. So they reckon some people got drunk, ran out of alcohol and dug that hole looking for more alcohol. Honestly, that does sound like the kind of drug adventure I would go on if I knew the location of a time capsule that contained alcohol. Well, if you were in school, you'd be 12 when it was... Say you were in year 6 when it was dark. You'd be 12. Fast forward 10 years, you're still living in regional WA. And you wake up. Well, you know you wake up. You're in the middle of a bender and you're like, Oh, fuck, I'd love some more alcohol. I remember, that's right, we dug that bottle of wine next to a rock, 20 metres deep. Imagine thinking that was easier than just, like, I don't know, getting money somehow (laughs) to buy, like, a goon bag, which would cost, like, 15 bucks. I'm pretty sure it's a lot more effort to dig 20 metres underground. Buying a goon bag, what sort of... Just, like good feeling does that bring you nothing what does digging 20 meters down to find old red wine give you it would be a crazy sense of satisfaction yeah but also imagine waking up realizing what you've done and then going fuck they're gonna find that out soon what are you doing I can't hear Gus because he's walked away from his microphone I'm back. What happened? Uh, Tell us all. I was adjusting my light. I looked in the camera and my face was a bit shadowy. Great. (laughs) Um, I don't know what more there is to say about it, but yeah, Yaloop lost their time capsule. Sucks for them, lol. Well, Zach, I don't know how shit this episode has been, but we've actually made pretty good time, so... We have. We're about to hit just under, I think, about... 39.50. 39.30 39.30 at the moment. So, I reckon we can cut off the last two things, just in case we don't have enough content for next week. Alrighty, then I am going to be discussing... Gold. Time. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, a plane, an aeroplane passenger... Plas- passenger. Passenger. Passenger has been caught smuggling gold nuggets in rectum to avoid taxes. Oh. <laughs> gold nuggets aren't smooth. That would hurt like fuck to put up your rectum. You you would think so? Rectum also, equals bum, people. Also, gold, very heavy. Like, I'm imagining this... Oh, yeah. This would... I'm imagining they didn't stick much up there, but imagine, like, a dildo-sized piece of gold. You'd fucking be almost falling over. Also, I can't not, imagine... That would stretch the fuck out of your ass. I can't imagine it would be good for your intestines having all that weight on them either. No, it would It would stretch it, surely. <laughs> yeah, um... So, essentially... Indian airport authorities... <laughs> I'm going to read this out word for word from the article because it's kind of funny how they worded it. Please. Indian airport authorities literally struck gold... When they spotted a man walking (laughs) oddly and discovered he had about 0.9 grams of bullion shoved into his rectum. Um, 0.9 grams. How much is that worth? Worth about (laughs) $60,000. And then they say that officials at the air intelligence unit mined the stash. 
from the unidentified smuggler's bottle. Mined it from his They asshole. mined it. So I'm just imagining they got God, a fucking how long do you have to and n- swung it up there. How long do you not have to wipe before it becomes mining your asshole? <laughs> oh, no. No, that's fucking disgusting, Zach. <laughs> Uh, oh god So essentially He was avoiding paying An 18% tax On his On his precious nuggets And I, I reckon that's fair I wouldn't want to pay that tax Um And Think about it If you've got to sit on a plane For a tiny amount of time With a bit of gold up your bum Yeah Versus pay 18% of its value on it And you wouldn't really I'd think That you would get caught least. either But the reason that he got caught Is because he was apparently Walking funny Yeah They spotted him no Walking shit. oddly I mean po- Yeah but 0. 0.9 grams That's not that heavy Like I don't understand how I don't know Maybe this man Had just never put yeah, Anything up his Yeah but maybe it was before. Just hurting him Because like You can't control What position The gold nugget is Yeah in, I'll, in I'll put a photo Of the nuggets up here I mean They're not shaped Terribly But like You know They're not Yeah not something you would particularly want to have up your ass for a prolonged period of time. Um, but apparently, another passenger on the same flight was caught carrying more than 1.3 kilos of gold, though officials did not disclose if that traveller had concealed it in the same way. Now, I think we can be fairly <laughs> certain that they didn't, because that would probably fucking kill you. Uh- <laughs> if it didn't kill you, it would rip through your... I mean, considering anus. the weight of gold, it probably wouldn't be that... It wouldn't be very big, but... No, but it would just be painful. Yeah. And it would break you. Yeah, what if it just ripped through your intestines? And you had a little gold-shaped nugget asshole. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like you put a cu- cookie cutter on your poop. And um, we always reach interesting lows towards yeah, the end of an episode. Yeah, we really do. Because I, yeah, I always, uh, I, I always tend to put the uh, the worst shit at the end. Um, but the worst shit is the best shit to make jokes out of. Yeah, but I mean that's pretty much all I had to say uh, uh, about that. It was a very short article. Apparently, another guy was caught with gold in his underwear. Oh. Um, How many people trying to fucking smuggle gold into a India? A lot of what people trying to India smuggle gold, gold um, but not everyone going to the extent of this man. So I think he he was unidentified, but we should all put our thoughts and prayers out to this man who had to shove gold up his ass and then didn't even get away with it. What did they do? Did they take the ass? Did they take the ass? <laughs> Did they take the gold? I would assume that he got the gold back and he just had to pay the tax on it because they can't mm. take your stuff unless it's, like, illegal. That's true. Is that all we've got? That, that's it, I reckon. Uh, so definitely stay tuned for next week. It'll be a fucking... The last ever Zach and Gus. For season, season one. one. Um, yeah, it's going to be a ripper of an episode, we hope, and uh, the last one for season God, one. God, watch and us fuck up on that promise. We will, uh, I reckon if we... We've been promising things since we started this podcast. If we can make one promise that we actually keep, I reckon it's that the last episode of the season will be at least all right. <laughs> Don't forget, you can contact us anytime. If it's good enough, we will read it out like we did with Joseph. Um, we'd love to hear from you regardless of whether you've got a good email or not. And Even if it's just a hi, I listen from Ontario, Canada, or wherever the fuck you listen to. I don't even know if that's in Canada. And for the last time this season, Second last. we'll see you next week. Oh yeah, true, good point. That brings us to the end of another Zach and Gus episode. You can like us on Facebook, Zach and Gus. You can follow us on Instagram at Zach and Gus. And you can contact this show anytime by emailing Zach and Gus show at gmail.com. Make sure you hit subscribe and we'll see you next week.